Good morning, all. I'm Rapstein on this first day of September, 2023, 8.15 a.m. Central Time. So before we go look at the markets, why don't we just go look at what really matters? And this was the non-farm payroll. It came in at 187,000. So the first thing your eye should say is, oh, that's a beat, that's a stronger market. There's some details here. First, the unemployment rate goes up three tenths to 3.8%, very close to four. That'll get the Fed's attention. That's what they want to see. When we look at the July, they took out 30,000 jobs. Now, you got to go back to June when they took out jobs. So between June and July, they took out 110,000 jobs or so. That takes the numbers overall down. Uh, they left the July unemployment rate unchanged. When we come to the uh, government payrolls, well, the prior was about half of what it was. Now, participation, more people are coming into the labor force. That's not a bad thing at all. Which people are these? Probably the lower paid people. That's not going to be wage inflation. That's how the market's going to look at this. If you look at the average hourly earnings month over month up, but not as much as what was expected. Misses it by six tenths, and the average hourly earnings are falling also, they are up 4.2, they expected 4.4. So it is a Goldilocks report. And what it does, in my opinion, and is unless the CPI numbers are insanely high, I think it gives the Fed reason to do nothing now in September. Obviously, I want to see PPI and CPI, keep my options open there. But if you were to ask me right now what the Fed is going to do, if I didn't know those numbers were coming, I'd say, I think the Fed can afford to look, see. I think they're going to be enamored by this 3.8% unemployment. And if that number can swell up to 4%, what they're going to say is, okay, inflation is falling, not the pace we want, but falling. And the big number, this labor, is starting to show two things. Number one, the wage inflation is abating. It hasn't gone away, but it's not as strong as it was. And the overall amount of jobs slipping. Now, you got to take into account 30 some odd thousand, I think it's 37,000 yellow trucking jobs were lost. That's important, okay? Those people will find jobs with other truckers, a good chunk of them. And then we still have the Screen Actors Guild, and we have other strikes. We have the GM or Stellantis, whoever they're going to strike going after from the United Auto Workers. Uh, we keep hearing about airlines. They're going to have more strikes coming at them. So you put this together, you temper things, but is the, is the labor market as strong? It's weakening a bit. I think that'd be a hard argument not to make. In a few minutes here, we're going to get the global groups going to release their uh, final, the word is final, August manufacturing PMIs. ISM will release their August manufacturing sector index. And at 9 o'clock, we're going to get construction spending. So we take a look at the markets, and you can see they were up pretty good going into the report. They really didn't advance from it in terms of the stock indices. The dollar has been down, giving back a bit of yesterday's gains. Europe, I still think, is going to have a lot of problems with their inflation. They're just not where we're at. They probably still got to move on interest rates. You can see most rates are higher. You know, Mexico made a major change. They, they did a certain amount of hedging to force stability into the peso. They are cutting that back dramatically and ending the program over time. The peso has had almost 150, 200 point move in, in 48 hours. So it's been rather dramatic. In the grain markets, well, you're going into the harvest season in the corn now, so we'll see what the heck that's all going to mean. I consider this noise in that market. And you're barely unchanged in the 10-year and the 5-year markets. As you know, I've been in the bull camp on the energies. Uh, I've got one position on in ETFs, uh, on the spider ETF. I don't have anything here. And in futures, I have an, I elected, I don't really elect. The chart action told me to not have too many positions on right now, and I don't uh, for my clients. So I, I can enjoy the next three days, and that's what I fully intend on doing. When you and I take a look at one other thing, the Labor Day sale is coming to an end. 40% off yearly research of charting courses and or my yearly research. How do you get it? You go to our website, irapstein.com, or you move your cursor up here. It ends in just a few days. This will be the last 40% off this year. 
So take advantage if that's something you want. You'll get the Bollinger Band course, the outside day course, and my complete charting course. Really, that, that's a great, great course. It really teaches you swing lines, moving averages, slow stochastics, all these different studies. I'm Ira. You have yourselves a great Labor Day holiday. You will see me over the weekend. I don't know if I'll record today or tomorrow. I've got three days to do it. So we'll do that for the weekly charts. You take care.